Hey everybody! Today we are going to start with portraits. Why? Why draw people? Well, it can be fun, it can be expressive, and it's good common information to learn from. We all know what people look like. We see them every day, at least in our mirror. And we could learn on, say, horses, but not all of us have horses, and we're not all sure exactly what the eye looks like, what the nostril looks like, because we don't all have them. People, though, we see them all the time. Artists throughout history have done portraits, and most importantly, self-portraits for that reason. You have a reference right on top of your shoulders. You have a cheat sheet right here. Hmm, I'm not sure where the eyes go. Let me look at a mirror. There they are. You have a common reference that we can go from. And you don't have to pay up the model and you don't have to wait for anybody to show up. Honestly, if you can draw a face, you can draw anything. Because it's a process of breaking down a complicated image into simpler parts and then putting those parts together to come up with a drawing. Not to mention, portrait artists can make a good deal of money. Check this guy out. Now, we are gonna start with a simplified, generic face facing forward, a full face like this one, just to start learning observation and some basic drawing skills. We're gonna start with a basic shape. We always start with basic shapes. And we're going to work about, about the size of your hand. You don't want to work too tiny because it's really hard to do details. You don't want to work too huge because then you're fighting with the size. But a nice spread your fingers out size is a very good size to work with for a beginning portrait. So we're going to start off with an egg shape. Now an egg is just kind of like an oval. Don't worry if this is perfect. Two reasons. People are not perfect. And two, we'll be able to fix this as we go along. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to actually flip this upside down to see if my symmetry is okay. People have usually one eye that's stronger than the other. And what that does to drawings is it tends to pull them a little bit to one side or the other. So just a simple trick of flipping it upside down can help the symmetry of your shape. Our next step is going to be to do some basic measuring. On this skull, you can see that if we put a center line down the middle of it, it will cut the face into two symmetrical halves. That's the first thing I'm going to do on my egg of my drawing, is I'm going to draw a vertical line down the center. Notice no ruler. I don't need a ruler. I am just eyeballing this because I just need a basic center line. I'm going to do a quick check to see if it actually is kind of in the center just by doing a very basic measuring technique. I'm going to put one side, the edge of it on the point, the other side where my thumbnail is, and then compare it to the other side. If they are the same, approximately, you've, you've got the center. So this is going to be our symmetry line. Now I'm going to leave all these lines as we go along. You should too, at least for this first drawing. We'll erase them as we go later. The next thing we're going to do on our skull, if you would actually draw a line through the eye sockets of the skull and do a comparison between the top half and the bottom half, you'll notice that where we would put an eye line is about halfway on the skull. So that's what we're going to do next on our egg. I'm going to just eyeball where the halfway point is and put a horizontal line that goes across to be my eye line. Again, I'm going to check it to see if it's about halfway. If it's a little bit higher than halfway, it's okay. If it's a little bit lower than halfway, it starts to look a little freaky. Next line that we're going to put is our nose line. Again, on our skull. If you go about halfway between the eye line and the chin, about halfway, 
which is, would be the underneath of the nose. This is where we're going to put our nose line, where the nose would sit. On my drawing, about halfway between the eye line and the chin, about halfway, I'm going to put a nose line. Again, I'm going to check it to see if it's about the same. If it's a little bit higher than halfway, that's okay. If it's a little bit lower than halfway, it starts to look a little freaky. And then finally, our mouth line. If you notice on our skull, the lips would meet pretty much where the top teeth are. So that would be where our mouth line is. Now, if you divide up between the nose line and the chin halfway, that's too low. So you'd find the halfway point and you scooch it up a little bit. Scooch, that's an art term. So again, on my drawing, I'm gonna find my nose line, my chin about halfway, scooch it up a little bit. That's gonna be my mouth line. And that will be our basic map for our face. Now, we're going to go back to the eye line and start with the eyes as our first feature. And we're gonna do a little bit more measuring. On my eye line, I need to divide it in half. <gasps> Yay! It's already in half. My symmetry line did that. All right. So I have two approximately equal lengths of an eye line. Now I'm going to take each half and I'm going to divide it in half again and put two little marks. This time I'm going to have four sections and I want to check to see that my four sections are about in the middle. Scooch this one over just a tad. And now I have four sections on my eye line. One, two, three, and four. Then I'm gonna take those four sections and I'm gonna divide them in half again. Half is your magic number. So here in half, here in half, here in half, and here in half. Now I have eight sections. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and they are all approximately the same width these three little marks on one side is going to be where one eye goes these three little marks on the other side will be where the other go eye goes and one eye should equal in width to the other eye and you should have enough room for a third eye right in the middle because who wouldn't want a third eye right the eye is Again, in our very generic, simplified face, kind of an almond shape or a football shape. We're not getting too detailed with these. And again, everybody has different shaped eyes. So I'm going to curve to the top, above the eye line, and then from below, underneath the eye line. Again, on this side, one curve above the eye line, one curve below the eye line. One thing that happens sometimes when people are drawing these, they think that these little marks should be the sides of the eyes and they do a little connection like this. And the ends of the eyes are flat. Please don't do that. The ends of your eyes aren't flat. They, they come to a point. Sometimes they have a little bit of a curve in them for a tear duct. Sometimes they overlap each other, but they do not come to little flat ends. So don't just connect the lines. That won't work. Now, once you have your two eye shapes, do a quick comparison to see if the height is about the same so that they're open about the same. Again, they do not have to be perfect because people are not perfect. Now I'm going to erase the lines on the inside because on the inside is where we have to draw more stuff. Um, but I'm going to leave the rest of the lines on the outside. Now, inside of these eyelids, there is an eyeball. The eyeball fits in the eye socket pretty snug. It's pretty big. And you don't see the eyeball. You just see the little bit that peeks out from the eyeball. But these curves actually... Uh, help show where some shadows are so it's good to know that it's back there but you don't have to draw this right now I just wanted to show you that it was there quick little biology lesson the eye the eyeball itself has two parts on it that we can see 
You have the colored iris, which is a muscle, colored iris. And inside of the colored iris, you have a black dot, which is actually a hole in your eye called the pupil. <gasps> what, Miss Bond, if you mean I have a hole in my eye? Yes, yes, you do. Does that mean I could like stick a pencil in there? No, no, don't, don't stick a pencil in there. You have a protective covering over your pupil called the cornea, and you really will damage your eyes if you stick a pencil in there. Please don't do that. So, we do see the iris, which is a muscle, and the pupil, which is in the center of it. You can't see too much of my eyes, they have really dark ones. But especially people with light colored eyes, you can see their pupils. And that's what we're going to draw next on our figure. Unless a person just got their foot stomped on or they got stung by a bee. You usually don't see the whole thing. Um, very surprised looking. Our irises are bigger than that. So we do have to draw them a little bit bigger. Now, like I said, they are a circle, but it tends to sit on the bottom eyelid and get slightly covered by the top eyelid. Now, even though the top is covered, I do suggest drawing the whole thing. One reason is so that you can match the irises on both sides to try to make sure that they are approximately the same size. Now that I've drawn the entire iris on each eye, I can make sure that the pupil is in the center of each iris. So Ms. Bottom, if the person is looking, say, to the left over here, I would draw their pupil over here, right? No. Are you suggesting that pupils migrate? They do not. If a person is looking to the side, the entire iris moves. In fact, the entire eyeball moves. This is not an iris with a pupil. This is an olive with a pimento, and if you add a little chunk of cheese to this, and you put a toothpick through it, you have an hors d'oeuvre. But you do not have an eye and iris with a pupil. We just do not. So, hors d'oeuvres, we save those for later, but we don't put them in our eyes. Now, once we have our iris and our pupil, you can erase the top of the iris that is peeking from beyond the thing. Now our person can see, but we do still have a few more details on the eye to take care of. Our next couple of things would be perhaps an eyelid. Some people can see a crease above their eye where the eyelid actually tucks to the top of the eyeball and makes a little crease. This shows on some people. For some people it's really high. For some people it's really close to their eyes. For some people it doesn't show at all. It just depends on the individual. If you would like to draw that crease, all you have to do is right on top of each eye, put yourself a little parallel curve to the top of the eye. Again, generic and simplified. One thing you can choose to do with your eyes is to add eyelashes if you would care to. Eyelashes are the hairs that help protect your eye from the dust that could possibly get into it. Now, uh, when you were young, or maybe yesterday, you had a tendency to draw eyelashes like this. Whee, the sun has arisen. These are not eyelashes. This is a mutant North American cockroach, and we for sure don't want those on our faces. Bad, bad cockroach. Um, eyelashes curve and they have a variety of lengths and distances and even directions. They tend to start a little horizontally toward the outside edge of the face. So this would be edge of the face and the nose would be this way. And then as they move their way up, tend to go a little bit more vertically. And as they come toward the center of the face, they tend to lighten and fade away. Uh, bottom eyelashes, same thing, start a little bit more horizontally, but they thin out much faster and they're lighter and they are shorter. Next up is going to be eyebrows. Your eyebrow 
actually goes a little bit beyond your eye on either side. It's more even with your inner corner, but it does go beyond on the outside. Now, eyebrows can do a lot of really cool things, and they show a lot of expression. They can be thick, they can be thin, they can be drawn on. Um, they can be painted on, and they are a big part of our face. What I'm going to do is just put myself a couple little guidelines coming up, and I'm going to draw in eyebrows that are just a little bit beyond your center and a little bit further beyond the end, just outlining it. After I outline it and I like the shape, I'm going to go along the edge and just sketch them a little bit. Now if you want them to look a little like they're made out of hair, that's what you would do. If you want to make them look a little bit more groomed, you could just leave them the outline. Another thing is you can actually use eyebrows to show some differentiation between genders. Uh, girls' eyebrows tend to be a bit thinner and a bit more arched. Guys' eyebrows tend to be a little bit straighter and a little bit thicker. But again, this is in no way, shape, or form a rule because everybody's eyebrows are different. Now our person has eyes. This was the most difficult part of the entire process. The rest of it goes a little bit easier. So, next thing we're going to do is move our way down to the nose. Talk about some differences. Some people have long noses, straight noses, crooked noses, wide noses, skinny noses, hangy over noses, hooked noses, bulbous noses. There are nose competitions for strange noses. I'm pretty sure. Um, but everybody has a different nose. So again, we're simplifying. This is going to be very generic and we're just looking at measurements to indicate where the nose would be. Now our nose will sit on our nose line and we need to figure out a basic width. Now if you look at me, you'll see that the outer edge of my nose kind of lines up with the inner corners of my eyes. Now again, you can go a little bit wider, a little bit narrower, anything in there, but that is a good indication of how wide the nose should be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kick my person in the shin and they're going to start to cry. Oh, I'm so sad. Why'd you kick me in the shin? It wasn't that hard, but I thought we were friends. You hurt my feelings. And those tears are going to show me my width of my nose. Now. We're going to keep this nose very, very, very simple. We're going to put a set of parentheses to show the lobes of the nose, of the nostrils, set of parentheses. And we're going to put a little set of fish hooks to show the nostrils themselves. You could put a little indication here if it's kind of an upturned nose. You could put a little indication here if it's a hanging over nose. Um, it just depends on the shape. Like I said, this is a very generic, very generic nose. One thing some artists do with their nose is they have a tendency to want to put lines here and here to indicate the shadows that are on the sides of our nose because our nose sticks out from our face but if you look closely there is not a line right here at all there's not a line when I when students put lines right here it makes me think that the nose can detach from the face being kind of like an elephant trunk and the person can go <laughs> and uh, smell their own forehead not entirely practical so I tend to leave those off and just wait for shading because that's what those are those are shadows so I'm gonna get rid of those if I draw anything it's just two little curves here on the insides of the eyes to indicate some deeper shadows that's it though our last feature on the face is the mouth and again there's a lot of variety some people have very full lips some people have very thin lips some people's mouths curve downwards some people constantly have a smile on their face some people have a crooked mouth some people barely have any lips at all especially if they tend to be stressed out but there's a lot of different shaped 
mounts. Again, we are being very generic and very simplified here. But to add some more measurements, we are going to make our person cry again. Force them to watch the first 15 minutes of up. They'll be bawling. They'll start crying from the centers of their eyes. Oh, I can't believe you made me watch that. Oh, I can't believe it. It's horrible. I hope this movie gets better. This is supposed to be a cartoon. And they're crying so much that they actually start snotting down their face too. Because, you know, when the tear ducts overwhelm, they can get into the sinuses and it can start running out your nose. So, we have these lines to help us draw the mouth. Now, the mouth is slightly. It's slightly higher than halfway. It's slightly curved. And it's also slightly smaller than these two teardrop lines. So we're going to start off with the opening of the mouth. And again, just a slight little curve to it. And if you're uncomfortable with that curve, leave it straight. That's fine. And this is going to indicate the opening of the mouth. But Miss Pontiff, I want to make them smile. Okay. Whee! Now, when you smile, your mouth stretches outward and back, more so than up. It doesn't really do that. It doesn't go up. It stretches outwards. More importantly, it changes the shape of your nose. Notice it winds things and lifts them up a little bit. And it also changes the shape of your cheeks and your eyes when you smile. So, if you wanted to make your person smile right now, there's a lot more changes you're going to have to make. So we're going to keep them kind of calm right now. We're going to keep just a uh, calm mouth, not angry, not sad, just kind of there. And we'll deal with smiles later. This opening, like I said, is slightly inward from the teardrops. Our snot lines are going to serve as our indications of where the bumps of the cupid bow go to. Now, your cupid's bow is the lovely little curve that happens on the top of your mouth because it kind of looks like a bow that cupid would fire arrows from to make people fall in love. This part of the lip is pretty straight. This part of the lip is pretty straight. And then from those snot lines, it curves in. Be gentle with those curves. You really don't want a mouth that does this number because if you kiss this person, you may have to go to the hospital. So we don't want those points. Keep it nice and gentle. For our bottom lip, it pretty much will just curve from corner to corner across the bottom. Now, as you can see, as soon as you outline it, it looks like lipstick. That's just the nature of the line. Now, if you would like your person to not be wearing lipstick, one thing that you can do is simply draw the bottom curve disconnected from the corners. What you're doing is indicating a little bit of the shadow that's under the lip more so than the lip itself. And by not connecting it, it makes it look a little bit less like lipstick. Notice though that if you wanted to, you could connect those corners and the curve would stay nice and neat. Try to avoid a, a bottom lip that looks like this. Whee! It, it wouldn't connect to the corners unless you did this number. Yay! We have a face! And it looks somewhat human! That's exciting! For a bowling ball. There are some more things we need here. We need a neck. And we need hair. Can we just leave them bald, Miss Ponta? No, not yet. You need to learn at least the basics of hair and then you can leave them bald later. The first thing we're going to do is to put the neck on. Here's something important to know. My face is up here. The edge of my paper is way down here. Do I, I don't care where the edge is. Don't draw the edge of your neck all the way down to the edge of your paper because that makes them look like giraffe people and as much as I like giraffes I don't I'm not going for giraffe people right now maybe that'll come later but for right now I'm not doing giraffes so 
it doesn't matter where the edge of your page is we need the neck to be much shorter than that uh, bye little giraffe person too wide of a neck like say from the edge of the face and your person will look like a tree trunk or a bodybuilder too skinny and your person's gonna look like olive oil from Popeye you want one that curves from the jaw just a slight little curve down a little bit out stop it pretty short leave it alone that's enough that's all we need for the neck our next thing that we're gonna do are the ears put your pencil down for a moment so that you can use your hands and what I would like you to do is put your fingertips right on the corners of your eyes and very straight work your way back following what would be your eye line to your ears you should be around the top of your ears that's pretty normal you could be a little bit into them it could be right at the top that's fine but you should be around the tops of your ears then Put your fingertips on your nose line, which would be right under your nose. Begin to slide them nice and straight back, and you should hit around the bottoms of your ears. Right? So then we're going to use those two basic measurements, eye line and nose line, to give the size of our ears. Now, there are some people with very different shaped ears. Will Smith's ears stick out. He makes a lot of money, so good for him. Uh, my grandpa used to have earlobes that kind of hang, hang down, hung down. And I would go behind him and go, blah, 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 and I would jiggle his earlobe, and he would get mad at me and say, blah, 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 Donna, and shoo me away. It was quite entertaining. Good memories. I miss my grandma. Ears are very complicated things with lots of little shadows and curves and highlights. And we want ours to be as simplified as we can get it. Eye line to nose line on both sides. Eye line to nose line. We're just going to draw a very simple little curve, a little bit bigger at the top than at the bottom. Again, lots of different shaped ears in the world. We're just simplifying them. And we're going to draw a couple of little lines on the inside to just indicate some of the complexity of what an ear has. Last thing we need, hair. You sure we can't leave them bald, Miss Monte? No, we're going to add hair. And, again, we're adding very simplified hair. So don't try to draw every single hair. Just suggest a style with a few lines. You're going to draw hair where we come from the hairline, which we're going to set up. You're going to draw the ends of the hair. You're going to draw the part, if you see a part. And that's pretty much it. If your person has very short spiky hair, use short spiky lines. If your person has curly hair, use curly lines. If your person has long hair, then use long lines. And we'll be able to set up a very suggested hairstyle pretty quickly without too much trouble. First thing we have to do is set up a hairline. About halfway between eyebrows and the top of the skull, I'm going to put a little mark. Now some people have a higher hairline, some people have a lower hairline, some people have a widow's peak. My dad's hairline is behind his head. Um, but just a generic basic hairline will come from that point, curve to the side of the face and a little bit in front of the ears. Again, curve to the side of the face, down to the front, a little bit in front of the ears because everybody has a little bit of hair in front of their ears. Now, from here, we have to figure out what kind of hair. I'm just going to do kind of like my daughter's hair. So, part's going to be right here. She kind of has a little swoop that comes in front. So, I'm just going to draw that line right here. A few little ones from the hairline underneath. Part comes this way, and she usually tucks it behind her ear. So, I'm going to tuck that line back there. Her hair is pretty short. So I'm going to stop it kind of at jaw level. Um, but it never is even with the top of the skull. Got to puff it up a little bit. Everybody's hair puffs up a little bit. So you're going to add the hair. It's going to go outwards. Little flip at the end. Outwards. Little flip at the end. And a couple of lines to show the length. A couple of lines to show that this way. I'm going to shape this a little differently to match her hairstyle just a little bit more. And 
that's it. Don't try to fill in every single hair. Don't shade it in. We're not shading anything yet. We just wanted a suggestion of a style. So you need where it goes from, like a part or a hairline, the shape of it, and the ends. And that's it. Hair is... You did it! You drew a face! And it wasn't that hard because we took complicated images and broke it down into smaller, simpler parts. And you did it. Great job. Try another one with erasing the measuring lines as you go to see how it comes out. Next up, we'll learn a profile view of a face. Again, still simplified and made up, but from the side. Seeing what's different in the shape of eyes, nose, mouth, and the shape of the overall egg.